After Buzz TV, starting place to the likes of WWE female superstars Kathy Kelly, Sonya Deville, and Zelina Vega proudly presents Women's Wrestling Weekly, the world's first podcast and YouTube series dedicated exclusively to women's wrestling, featuring all the latest news as well as interviews with top superstars in the industry. And now, After Buzz TV's own gorgeous lady of wrestling, TK Trinidad. <laughs> Bonjour, you're watching Women's Wrestling Weekly, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. My name is TK Trinidad, aka the Canadian Assassin, and I am not alone. I have my very special co-host. She hails from the valley. She is a farmer's daughter. Please welcome Emily May. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. How good? are you doing? <laughs> good, good, good. So Bryant is not here. He is doing some amazing things. He is very busy. I don't know how he has so the energy. So busy. <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. We keep with the show. So we, we are going to do start of the week. We are going to do news, but you guys don't watch for all that stuff. You guys watch about the guests. And our this guest is no exception. She's a former NXT superstar. She has a black belt in judo. Latinas do it better. Please welcome Ty Conti. Hello, thank you guys for having me. So excited. <laughs> thank you for joining us. I really, Welcome. really appreciate it. And also shout out to MJ for putting this together um, because it's just kind of like, I, yeah, can you can you make it work? So shout out to her for, for, yes, for putting thank us together. You. I really yes. appreciate it. <laughs> um, so kind of let's get into it. I saw, I saw a few interviews. You've been doing a couple of interviews. I saw a few intervals. Um, when you got signed to WWE or when they brought you in for trials, you said you had no idea of like what wrestling was about whatsoever. Um, what was the first, like the first thing that happened or the first thought that came into your head when you started training there? Um, well, I don't know. It's just like, as I said before, everything felt like judo for me. Mm -hmm. I was not able to realize that I was not doing judo anymore. Like before my first match, after my first match, I was like, whoa, okay. It's all different. It's completely different from judo. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I think I fell in love with wrestling after I realized it's much more than just a fight. Because that's, that's what was about for me, right? right? Being a fight, competition and everything. And in wrestling, no, like, you need to put a gimmick together. You need to mm -hmm. act. You need to connect with people. You need to think about everything else outside. So... That was like everything crazy. And I think I just realized that after my first match. Emily? Yeah, so uh, so after your first, how was your first match and how did you feel about it? And, you know, did anyone give you advice when you started that, uh, that kind of helped you train? So uh, my very first match was like in a PC life, uh, closed mm -hmm. door doors just for us right and I had Sarah Logan that was amazing I felt so comfortable but still like I didn't feel depression because that was just the people that I trained with mm -hmm. people that I was seeing every day so there was not too much depression and Sarah was like I will help you with everything and she did so felt amazing and I had my first match outside of PC against Sonia Deville and it was in a WrestleMania access. <laughs> oh my God, there was like so many people and I was so nervous, had no idea what I was doing. So I was like, wow, what am I doing here? Like, I don't know. And that was a mess. I never watched the <laughs> match back <laughs> because that was not like a good match at all. So sorry, Sonia. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but like after, you know, like I think it was like, yeah, now I think I'm starting to realize what it's all about. Mm -hmm. But the coaches and everyone, they're like, no, you were fine. You did a good job. It was your first time. So keep going. Yeah, but I was excited. So. But Go on, Emily. Yeah, no, I was gonna say, what, what was there any matches that, that you watched as you were preparing to kind of do your research? That you... Not really. Yeah. Being honest, not really. I was just so excited and like worrying about my body and my gear and my hair, you know, all the looks. Cause I was like, in judo, I never like 
put myself together. Mm-hmm. I barely like brushed my hair, you know, like no makeup, all sweaty, and I didn't care. So I think I was like, oh no, I get it. I know how to fight. I need to worry about my look. Mm-hmm. And that was just something crazy that I talked back then. And I didn't know any wrestling. And I didn't know even like how to to look at it because I had no idea. So no, I didn't I didn't look at any matches before. Oh my god, I'm ashamed. <laughs> I mean, we're, you you learned so much. We're we're here now. Um, I remember when I, I was covering the May Young Classic, and you were introduced to, to us in the world. And there was just something that stood out about you. That I'm like, I really hope that we're gonna see more of you. You know, beyond the May Young Classic, and we did. Um, now you did mention in previous interviews that you did pitch a lot of different storylines. You know, just to kind of get your name out there and you know get those matches. Is there one storyline in particular that you wish that they would have like? Man, that was a really great storyline if they just put the time to it. Well, I did a, I did a bunch. I feel like the one that I pitched with on the Spirit Era should be really good for me and like different for the for the group. I think mm-hmm. like that would be like a breakout for me. And then I pitched some after that um, and gimmicks too. But like I, since I'm gonna try to use the ideas that I Mm -hmm. had before. I don't want to really just say it because I want to see if it's going to work for me because now that I'm free and released, (laughs) you know, I feel like I'm going to try and see what's going to work best for me. It's not that I don't like what I'm doing today, but I think I can do more. Mm -hmm. Even like, you know, if I can change a little bit, um, but I still thinking which one I'm going to like try to use for now because I had so many cool ideas and I don't want to like rush everything and put everything together and nothing makes sense. Right. So kind of fun to think a little bit more. Okay. So after the initial shock, you get the call and they say you're no longer with the company and you know, we've all been there as far as, you know, jobs and stuff like that. After that initial shock, um, did anybody give you any advice from, you know, the wrestling community? Oh my gosh, yes. So Nikki Cross, she's one of my best friends. So she's always with me. Like since day one, she was helping me with everything. She, I always call her for advice and everything. But someone that I need to say like a big thank you, it's Chelsea Green. Mm-hmm. Um, so after the couple, like the first day, she texted me and I was like so upset and nervous about everything. I was like, what am I going to do now? And she was like, hey, girl, you need to do a couple of things. I'm going to help you out. Do a big cartel page, do a pro wrestling tea store. And then she was helping me like with mm-hmm. everything because I had no idea. I never did something like that before. So I had no clue. And when I was in NXT, I didn't worry like to do stuff like that, right? right. She mm-hmm. was like helping me with everything. And I don't know, like, uh, much promotions outside so everyone that hits me up send me an email or, or whatever and I don't know I asked her and was like hey Chelsea can you help me with this is this a good idea I don't know so big thank you because she has been like amazing with me yeah she's That's she's been on incredible. the show a couple of times she's an absolutely amazing uh human being, uh, human being. Uh, Emily yeah so as you're transitioning kind of as a free agent um, what are your looking ahead? What are your plans to kind of get back in the ring or try something new, perhaps? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to, of course, I'll be in the business. I'm so excited, like, for everything. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of nervous because it's so new. Mm-hmm. And thank God I have, like, a couple people help me, like, MJ. Uh, we have, like, we are so close right now. We are training together we got back to the ring to train yesterday so i'm so excited but like besides wrestling because we cannot do much right now mm-hmm. because of the pandemic unfortunately um i'm back to studying because i was not studying for a long time and i'm doing digital marketing oh, nice. and Thanks. yeah i really like it so excited so excited 
And now, uh oh. Audio and video, or just audio? One second, you guys. Yeah, it looks like we lost her. Well, well we're working on the technical side. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the news. Um, yeah, so um, there's some news coming uh, in. Stephanie McMahon tweeted about this. Oh, it looks like she's reconnecting. Oh. Before you gave out all the good, I know before all like, before all the details. Timing is everything. <laughs> I know, right? Hello. Oh, there you oh, go. Hey, there you my are. My bad. No, you good. Know, I think I think it's my connection. I know it's live, so sorry, guys. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's hey, okay. <laughs> we've had we've had babies on the show. We've had all types of things. So we're, Pets we're, we're come good. on, dogs. Yeah. Like it's all good. <laughs> we're all good. <laughs> um, so. You you said that you're planning um, like you're still going to be wrestling. You and MJ started training yesterday. So yeah. what's the kind of game plan of that? So um, I have a couple like offers like to be back in the ring. So I'm trying to think about it as to the best option. Uh, as I said before, I don't know much about the promotions and everything. So I'm still looking at it, and I'm gonna wait a little bit more mm -hmm. since I'm still with like. The non-compete contract with WWE, I can't right. do much anyways. So, but besides wrestling, I have like, you know, I'm planning a thing. Um, I will be talking about really soon, but uh, since I thought you could give us an exclusive. Yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> well, it's hard because I don't have. I'm honest, like I don't have. Um, I I don't know what I'm doing yet in the okay. wrestling business. I don't know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. I don't know like what, I, what I'm gonna do now because I need help. I'm waiting for my friends to help me. Because <laughs> they well, help me a lot, believe me. Yeah, yeah. The, good, the good news is thanks to social media and thanks to um, just women's wrestling in general. Like mm -hmm. uh, um, I keep saying every show, we're at a hundred and something episodes and we've only had a couple guests repeat. So there's so many women wrestlers out there and there's also so many promotions that like you're not gonna, especially with Chelsea too. Chelsea's been, she's been in the game for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, you're gonna you know, have so, if, so yeah. many places to go. If you want to work, there's, <laughs> yeah. there's work out there for, for sure. Yeah. Um, let's talk about your judo. Are you gonna, any plans on going back to that? Cause I mean, it wasn't like you were just, you know, at the judo gym, just chilling. Like you were doing major competitions in Olympics. Yeah. And stuff. Well, uh, I thought about it, but I don't know. I kind of feel like I belong to wrestling now, you know, like mm -hmm. I want to be in the business for now. I may start to do some competi competitions in jiu-jitsu a little bit, but like I don't want to go back to judo right now. It's going to take a long time if I want to go back because I need to train again. I haven't been like training for competition for okay like more than three, almost four years now. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't feel like I'm coming back for judo, but maybe competitions in jiu-jitsu. And I'm planning um, a self-defense class for women. So oh, I'm nice. So That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Now so with, excited. Now with jiu-jitsu, because um, you have Ronda Rousey coming from that type of background as well. Did you guys have any chance to make that connection or just you guys were two separate worlds? Well, I met um, I met her in Brazil before the debris. Oh, nice. Yeah, she came to my gym uh, in Brazil, in Rio. And I had a chance to talk with her a little bit. I was teaching her how to samba, like dance. Oh, I danced nice. from Brazil. Yeah, that was cool. That's and <laughs> it's, it's so funny because like um, as a judo, in judo, I was always looking up to her. I was like, I want to be like her, you know? Like she was kind of an inspiration. Mm -hmm. And then when I when I came to WWE and she got signed, it was like, oh my God, now I work in the same company as her. Mm -hmm. So we got the chance to, to see each other and we were talking again. That was amazing. Like she's super cool. Her husband is super cool. They're really nice. Like every time we saw each other, she was like completely good with me. 
So nothing bad to say about her. She's amazing and an inspiration. That's so that's so amazing. So so thinking of like your inspiration and kind of the matches that you had at WWE, is there someone that you that was your favorite opponent or someone that you didn't necessarily get to have a match with that you that is like your dream opponent? Okay. Oh, that's a hard one because I really <laughs> like to work with a lot of the girls, but I feel like two people that I learned a lot from and I felt so comfortable, uh, Dakota Kai and Candace. Mm, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like every time I was in the ring with them was like the feeling after the match was, mm -hmm. oh my God, I did it. I feel like I belong here. They, you know, like, they made you feel good. They help you. Uh, they teach you. They are amazing. And the most important thing, I feel like they're open to listen what you need to say, you know, like, because a mm -hmm. couple of people, sometimes when you are that, um, you just want to say it and the other people need to listen, do it. Sometimes that's how it works. But like with them, I, I felt free to ask and to give my ideas and they were able to help me and sometimes say, hey, Tay, maybe it doesn't make sense here. We can change. Let's talk about psychology mm -hmm. and everything. So I learned a lot from them. That's oh, incredible. Someone, That's so important. <laughs> yeah. And someone that I never wrestled. I don't know. I think I, I, I wrestled almost everybody there. Oh, OK, Asuka. Oh, okay. Asuka, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> And then what about yeah. from the um, other rosters from like SmackDown and, and Raw? Is there anybody that you saw that you're like, okay, one day when the stars align, this, this will be an amazing match? Someone that I really liked, I don't know, but I feel like we could have like a really fun match. It's Alexa. That's I feel one. like, yeah, because of the face expressions mm -hmm. and the attitude, maybe, mm -hmm. I feel like it would be fun. So now, are there any promotions that you're kind of looking at? I mean, obviously we're in this pandemic, so there's not too much that's happening. Are there any promotions that you're looking at now that you're like, I can see myself with these, you know, with these uh, ladies and gentlemen there, these wrestlers? Um, I'm gonna lie if I say I'm not looking at it because I am, mm -hmm. but like, I don't have a special one that I really want to go or something like that. Because since I never wrestle outside of the debris, everything is going to be great. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like everything's going to be a dream. But like the special one that I really want to go, it's a promotion in Japan, Stardom. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I really want to go to Japan. Yeah. yeah, I really see myself there like learning from the Japanese and from everyone else but I have a passion for, like because of judo of course to Japan mm -hmm. that's like I, I gotta go oh, I need to go yeah like a double, a double I thing. could totally see you and yeah. that's a perfect a perfect fit for you yeah, yeah. I'm so excited and I can't wait I can't wait like I talk with a couple people um some friends told me they would help me to go there because I don't know anyone like founder mm -hmm. but let's see i'm excited yeah everybody i have uh, spoken to or been on the show they talk about J japan like with such high mm -hmm. regard like the experience is is absolutely crazy so i think it would be there's there's a lot of world for you to go and wrestle so that's a good thing in the in the era that we're in after after covid I yeah, <laughs> for sure. I hope it doesn't take too long because I'm getting crazy at home. <laughs> well, at least you guys are training, so that's good. You have yeah. That training. yeah, we started training yesterday, so just move a little bit, you know, and feel my body again. That was good. Now, if you were to put like a Mount Rushmore or like your top five uh, female wrestlers, um, as far as like, these are your greats, who would they be? Okay, um, so since I'm not like really from wrestling before, that was not my background, I don't want to say like someone from the past because I'll be lying, yeah, you know, like, yeah. uh, I feel like someone that is such an inspiration for me is Sara Maros. Okay. She was my coach and 
I feel she's one of the person, the people that helped me a lot, like to be in the business, to love the business, to learn, to see like, oh, wrestling is like that. You need mm -hmm. to, you know. So I feel Cyrus. I have no words for her to be honest. She's amazing. So glad and so grateful, like to be able to work with her before, like learn so much from her. Uh, Meiko Satomura. Okay. Yeah, she's, I had the pleasure to learn from her in PC a little bit too. And she's my dream mat. Okay. Like, she's amazing. Um, who else? Let's, let's see. I will say like AJ Lee. Okay. Because, um, the first the first time I started to look at wrestling and I was like, oh, how does it like what is it? She was the first one to pop up and I was like, oh, I like her. So I will never forget like, you know, this moment. And I feel like that's it, pretty much. And if, I will put myself there. <laughs> the first, you I know? like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's it. Okay. Emily? All right. Um, I think, um, yeah, I think, I, I think I'm good with my questions. <laughs> I love so, that. I loved your Mount Rushmore. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now um, you, you have a couple of promotions that you're looking, you're looking at, but you're not going to tell us. You have, you're doing your digital marketing and you have another thing that's coming that you're not going to give us the exclusive for, but that's okay. But we're excited to wait to <laughs> see what excited. it is. <laughs> we're excited no nonetheless. Um, is there like, what do you, what do you hope for your career in the next like five years? So we know that you're going to continue with wrestling, but what's like the game plan if you could make it all work? Well, um, uh, I feel I'm, I'm kind of new, you know, uh, I had a great experience. I'm, I'm in the business for three years and a half now, mm -hmm. but I still need to learn a lot. And that's what I'm all about right now. I need to learn. I want to live there. Like, I want to go have big matches, like um, do different types of matches, all the type of matches, like being the ring longer, uh, wrestling with everyone, because I never had a match, like a 30 minutes match, you know, mm -hmm. like I never had this type of experience. Uh, I, I always went to use chairs and do like all the craziest matches. And I want to do, it's something that I need to, you know, I need to yeah. do, I need to mm -hmm. feel it. I need to like, um, I don't know. I just want to learn from everybody, meet new people, travel the world just like I did in judo before. Yeah. Uh, I need to have the type of challenge. I need to feel nervous. I need to be excited how I am right now because I can't wait to go back into the ring and, you know, wrestle everyone. Mm -hmm. And I feel like my main thing now is um, I really want to learn more about wrestling. Mm -hmm. And, of course, win some titles because I need them, you know. <laughs> Get some gold. <laughs> right? Get some gold just like in judo. <laughs> so... Yeah, I will always compare with my life in judo. It's kind of crazy, mm -hmm. but that was my life since I was seven years old. So that's all I know pretty much. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's amazing. I mean, it's so ingrained in who you are. And I just, I love that you bring that to the wrestling ring. You bring that, that, uh, that energy and that background and athleticism to, to what you do. It's, it's incredible. Um, I wanted you. to kind of get your, your take on, how you feel the wrestling industry is going to change based on what we're going through right now with like these empty arena matches and how it's affecting fans and how you see you can um, see yourself in it and kind of helping uh, change that wrestling industry. Um, well, I, I didn't have a chance to wrestle in an arena before. Um, so I was, supposed to wrestle in NXT a couple of weeks before I got released but well it didn't happen um so I don't really know how it feels but uh by watching the main mm -hmm. roster like Raw, NXT, uh, Smackdown um I see like a couple people shining and like 
you know, like doing a great job with it. Uh, and I feel like AW is doing a great job mm-hmm. putting like all the roster outside mm-hmm. as a crowd. Like it's a good way to put everyone over. And I feel like that was really smart and really good. It's entertaining to watch, you know, since we are like really missing the fans because I don't know how it feels because when you're in the ring, you need the fans to react, mm-hmm. to know the right time to do everything. So it's it's so important that I never imagined to do a match without the fans. And now because of the pandemic, everyone needs to do it. And I wish I know how it feels, you know? I really wish I know, but like, I feel everyone's doing great. It's been like crazy time in the world right now, but they're figuring out everything. And yeah, I hope, I don't know. I don't hope I can do because I, I, I really hope like everything over it's soon. Back yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's back yeah, to normal, yeah. Yeah, and we have the fans back in the arenas be, like, like before because it's crazy to see like a match without the fans, you mm-hmm. know, like yeah. at first was scary and I was like, oh my God, it doesn't make sense. It don't seem right. But yeah, everyone's trying to do the best to entertain like on television or streaming or whatever. Yeah. But it's crazy. So you came from Brazil to the US um, and I, I, know I came from another country to the US and you know, there's some adjustments but what was like, is there, is there certain things that you like, you just looked around and you're like, what are they doing? Like, is it, it's just something like different lifestyles that you just always, it's one of those things in your head, just like, okay, this, I'm in America now. This is, this is strange, but okay, I'll go with it. Um, pretty much everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's crazy. Well, uh, first thing is like in Brazil, we are always used to see a lot of people on the street Mm -hmm. you know like it's a lot of people outside we always walking we have like Mm -hmm. uh i don't know like but bus in the streets every time and we don't have it here i never Mm -hmm. drove before because i didn't like it and here Mm -hmm. i have no option you know it's kind of weird i'm like Oh my God, I go outside, I don't see people. Everyone's inside the car. Mm -hmm. It's so weird. It feels so weird for me. Like, so weird. I look around, I'm like, okay, I need to go to supermarket to see people because I'm getting crazy. (laughs) Yeah, like, wow. It's it's still like, sometimes I'm with my husband and I'm like, I just need to walk. Let's go in in the street to walk I need to Mm -hmm. take a walk and we just see people when we go like to parks that people are doing exercise you know but like not normally right it's it I get kind of frustrated and crazy I'm like oh my god I need to see people I need to see people wow Wow. you wouldn't like LA then because yeah LA is so spread out you drive everywhere (laughs) yeah probably no (laughs) Um, no so let, let's talk a little bit about your promo. So, you know, you came from another country, you weren't speaking English, your English is like, because you mentioned, so time mentioned before the interview that, you know, there might be some stuff that she's not understanding, but you seem like you're doing fine and everything's, everything's good to go. So I think we're on yeah. the same page. Um, <laughs> yeah. But as far as promos, like, what do you think that you need to improve or what, what's kind of like in the classes that you took, like that one thing that stuck in your head for you for your future promos that you want to use? So, uh, unfortunately, I never had a chance to show my promos on TV or anything like that. Uh, but my feedback since, since my tryout, so in my tryout, I used like a judogi, uh, mm-hmm. my gold medal, and I was just talking about myself because I had no clue what promo means. Right. You know, I was just trying to be myself. They just told me, talk about yourself. I'm like, okay, I'm going to put a black belt and I'm going to talk about, you know, my life. Right. And I got so emotional because I was talking about like the tryouts for the Olympic Games and how that was my dream and I didn't make it. Uh, so I started to cry. And after that, I was like, I can't cry. So I was trying to make like people laughing after, the, after that. So I feel I did a good job like of mixing all my emotions Mm -hmm. and show them that I can do it, right? 
even I had no idea what I was doing, but I just did. And then like all my feedbacks was really good in promos. That's why I don't get it. They never mm -hmm. like let me do a promo on TV because all the feedback was good. And that's right. my frustration because like, they were like, no, your, your promos are great. Like uh, your expressions are great. Uh, you are English, like we can understand now. And like, it's great, it's all good. You're gonna be a big star and blah, blah, blah. blah. And I never had a chance to show. You know, so I'm preparing, I'm preparing a couple of promos that I'm gonna be putting on my social media so Ooh. people can see it. Yeah, I have some cool packages coming. Okay. Yes, that's okay. the way to do it. You gotta put your own stuff out there, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah, so and now, I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna wait. I'm just doing it and I'm gonna post because now, since I'm not with the debut anymore, I can do it, you know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. let's, let's do it. So I'm excited. So we're gonna get into rapid hot tags. So that means I'm gonna ask you a question. You say the first thing that comes to your mind. I'm nervous. No, no, it. you'll be, you'll be, you'll be. It's, it's all fun. <laughs> all right. So here we go. Always early or always late? Me. Mm -hmm. Are you always always earlier or are you always late? I mean, always. Well, it depends. In Brazil, always late. Okay. Here, always early. Okay. That's something right. that I learned from Americans. Okay. <laughs> what is the one thing that you love about yourself? My abs. Wait, did you say eyes? <laughs> you say Wait, no, my, abs? My abs. Oh. Abs. <laughs> I mean, it, those Instagram photos of you, like, it's, yeah. <laughs> and then you said something totally different. Okay. Um, your, dream, your dream dinner guest. Uh, uh, sorry, it's not you. Your dream dinner guest. So anybody in the world, dead or alive, who would you have dinner with? My, hus my husband's going to kill me, but Maluma. Maluma, so who's that? It's a singer. Okay, all right. Well, I, hopefully your husband doesn't see this interview. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, last show you binge watched. A what? Last show you binge watched. Like, oh God, they don't watch TV. You don't watch TV? Uh-uh. Okay. All right, we'll take that. Okay, uh, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> if, you, if you can listen to one album for the rest of your life, what would it be? Maluma. Oh. There's the <laughs> doubling, doubling up. <laughs> and now, last question: uh, one last meal before you know it's you. You go go off into the heavens. What meal would it be? Churrasco, churrasco. It's like a Brazilian barbecue. Okay, mm, okay. you were ready for that one. I know you're like yeah. a barbecue. Are you hungry now? <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. You guys need to try picanha. Picanha. Okay, we have some yeah, it's here, so I think you can definitely yeah. We can yes. track down some, some Brazilian try it. restaurants in LA. I like oh, it. Try coaching it too. Oh my God. No, let's don't start talking about food. I'll be here the whole day. <laughs> we need a cook now you need a cooking show. You need a Brazilian yes. cooking show. Oh my God. Can you imagine? No, I will eat everything before. That's like, fine. As long as <laughs> it you work it out. <laughs> it don't work for me. I don't, well, let's try it. It's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, see, just add it to the YouTube page. Um, <laughs> so before we get out of here, we have some news to talk about. Yeah, so uh, Stephanie McMahon tweeted out yesterday morning. Um, she she tweeted, Kicking Down Doors is the first book to tell the story of WWE's women's evolution. I'm so excited for the next generation of the WWE universe to read these stories and be inspired by the incredible superstars, past and present. And so it's this really gorgeous cover with lots. There's, it's so vibrant. It's such a vibrant color. Um, she posted the link to the publisher. Um, and it's just all about the women from the beginning, inside, outside of the ring that made this wrestling industry what it is today and where they're going. And so I'm excited. I'm going to order it. I'm going to, it talks about WrestleMania one to, you know, May Young classics, oh, you know, wow. that spans the spectrum of the events that kind of surrounded the women's evolution. So I'm excited yes. to kind of pick it up and, and see what it's all about. And I know it's going to be a, it's a continuous continuous effort to get more women mm -hmm. in uh in the ring and behind the scenes um in the wrestling industry so we're going to continue to work at it so i know that it will continue to grow 
Nice. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, in the ring is definitely coming along. There's so many, um, they're just signing so many people, um, not just WWE, but wrestling promotions in general. So that's a really good thing. Um, did you get a chance to read that Bella's book yet? So I am going to borrow it from my because I covered the Total Bellas uh, panel mm -hmm. uh, after show here at After Buzz. And so we are going to cover it at some point. But so okay. I'm getting it from my fellow panelists and we're going to, we, we've been slightly talking about it a little bit, but there's okay. a lot of juicy interesting, details. juicy details about past relationships and, uh, and, and uh, growing up. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they, uh, what they're all talking about. All right. Nice. And last but not least, you have a little bit of sad news for us. Yeah, um, unfortunately, everyone um, saw the news on Twitter and you know all over the social media platforms. Um, we we heard Sunday, I think it was Sunday afternoon, right, TK, mm -hmm. um, that um, Shad went missing um, oh, yeah. uh, off the coast of Venice Beach um, with his family. Um, the lifeguards uh, saved his son, but unfortunately, this this. This, early this morning, they found um, his body, unfortunately. So yeah. um, the whole, uh, all of WWE from A, and also AEW, NWA, um, everyone across the wrestling industry, as well as just um, even non-wrestling people have been mm -hmm. sharing their memories and just how much he was such a wonderful person, how he, how even his short time in WWE, he was such a nice guy. He really... He really just was such a hard worker. And yeah, so there's so much, if there's so much outpouring of love and support for him and his family right now. So, yeah. Um, and TK, you had a special story because I know you, you were telling me a little bit before that you yeah. met him and you kind of um, interacted with him a lot um, before. So, yeah. It's, it's one of those things, he's also gonna be our, our star of the week. Um, yeah. it's, you, you have a lot of people, and I think you're really doing it right, uh, Ty, but when you leave WWE, you, you're leaving this big platform, but you also have these opportunities. Mm -hmm. And you know, some people use it and then some people squander it. And mm -hmm. with him, like, you know, the fact that, you know, up to, I saw him at SmackDown like two years ago. So, you know, WWE still, you know, beloved him. He was still, you know, able to go into the, um, the service kitchen and do all that stuff so yeah. and he was he was into acting he did so many he did yeah. so many things after his departure from he WWE. was developing scripts for movies mm -hmm. and tv mm -hmm. shows and he was boxing and doing other like athletic um bodybuilding kind of stuff and mm -hmm. and he he was bigger than wwe yeah he was bigger he was so much more um because his heart was in a his heart was so big and his heart was in everything that he did yeah and it showed and the community, like I'm getting chills because the community and outpouring of love for him just shows that he touched everyone that he was with. Even yeah. like even fans have been sharing, like a lot of my friends, you know, met him or worked with him or trained with him. And they've been sharing kind of what they like on a personal level, what yeah. their interactions with him were. And it's just really beautiful to see that like your legacy lives on. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, you could definitely see that outpouring, like, you know, on social media, like you were saying, as far as people just showing their, uh, their, their love for him and their hope that prior to today's um, findings that, you know, he would be somewhere. Um, yeah, my, my story is just one of those, it's the same thing. Like he, I, when I met him, we was, it was at a fitness uh, convention, had no idea who he was. But he was just such this big guy, this big personality. But it wasn't one of those things like, I'm this big guy, so you guys should worship, worship me because mm -hmm. that happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it was just such a super, super nice guy and friendly. And, you know, it's just a warm, a warm heart. And then I've met him on several different occasions as well. It's one of those things where you just like, this person's just an, a genuine, like, nice person. And mm -hmm. this is... Um, I was I was completely shocked, but if you hear the story, he sacrificed for his son. Yeah. Oh like my he God. Told, yes. He told the lifeguards to take his son. He'll be there when yeah. they get back. And he's such a know. hero, and and it just shows that like he put him he put his son and he put his role as a father first above anything, and yeah. that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I never met him, but like we we can see like even we can see like how good he was because all the good memories that people are sharing like the way he he unfortunately died like saving to saving his son it's just like it's a sad day unfortunately mm -hmm. and like everyone who can pray like pray for his family 
because they will need right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah. I mean the the good thing is he was such a great person that there's gonna be way more amazing memories um that that you can hold on to. Um speaking of somebody who like had folks pass away recently. Um, you know, those, the, it, the chance to have all those amazing memories and to think back and to look back and have those opportunities to interact with this, this, this amazing human being, whether, you know, it's his son, or his father, or being a husband or being a mm -hmm. wrestler or whatever. Um, you know, the fact that you can have a, these great opportunities, great memories is definitely a, a legendary thing. So, um, you know, definitely prayers to his family for coping with this because coping with uh, death is not, yeah. not easy. Um, but you know, you think of the positive times and I think it'll definitely yeah. help for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, changing up a little bit. I saw your website. It's amazing. So all the tips that Chelsea has given you is definitely, definitely on the right, right track. So tell everybody where they can find, uh, all your social media, your website, everything, the cooking show, all of that. Well, uh, now I have a YouTube channel too. It's under Ty Conti. Uh, all my social media is going to be Ty Conti underscore. Is that how you say underscore? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Uh, <laughs> and my big cartel page, Ty Conti. All my merch is going to be under Ty Conti. So easy peasy. Go yeah. check it out, guys. Yeah. The page is very easy. Like it's very mm -hmm. easy for people to buy things, which is a good thing. Yes. So yeah. Make that easy. Thanks to Chelsea. Thanks to <laughs> Chelsea. Thanks to Chelsea. Shout out to Chelsea for her. Ooh, shout out. <laughs> um, so any major thing that anybody can be looking out for that you can tell us or hint about like something's coming out in two weeks or a week or a month? Um, well, I will not be able to do anything to the next month. Okay. So it's almost time. It's like 10 days, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, 10 well, days. 10 well, days I know we, we have your promos coming up that you said, yeah. so we'll look out for yeah. those. And so yeah, 10 days, something big is happening okay. that you're going to let us know first so then we can put well, it out to the world. I don't think it's anything. Well, I don't have anything planned like for the day now. It's uh -huh. just like after next month, I will be okay. I will be completely free, you know? Like, okay. I will be like, good done with WWE 100 percent so okay. i'll be able to show more do more go into the places you know start my schedule and everything so sounds for good. now i need to apply it <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh well thank you so much for hopping on the show we really really appreciate yes, it thank um you. you know your energy is amazing i mean given everything that's happened all the day everything that's happening now, everything that's happened, your energy is amazing. And, you know, you just keep pushing uh, for sure. So thank you so much for coming on yes. the show. Thank yeah. you. Thank you guys. My pleasure. Yeah. I no was, problem. you know, a little bit nervous, but because of things, I was like, what if I don't understand? Oh my God. Oh but, no, you're fine. no, you did great. Okay. You did great. <laughs> Before we get out of here, Emily, where can they find you? Yes. So uh, you can find me on all social media platforms at Emily May Heller. You can catch uh, After Buzz's coverage of NXT tonight at seven and then Total Bellas on Fridays at seven as well. And if you guys are watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you're watching us on our listening to us on your podcast, make sure you give us five stars or better because that's all we take because we are the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Other than that, if you are following us on social media, if you're not following us on social media, make sure you do so at WPW Weekly on Instagram and on Twitter. On As well, follow After Buzz TV because without them, there'd be no us. So, you know, follow all, all that good stuff. Uh, my name is TK Trinidad. You can follow me at everything at TK Trinidad. Thank you again, Ty, for joining us. We really, Thank really you appreciate guys. it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks. We'll see you next week. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.